If you're thinking about your lifespan, something life-changing probably happened. For me, this event occurred in 2020, which has changed the purpose of my work and renewed my efforts to optimize my own health. Honestly, I had no option. I was either going to passively succumb to the events of 2020 or figure out how to fortify my fortress and strategically approach my preservation, my life offensively. My motivation to survive was for my family, really my children. And I could have chosen to stay home and wait it out like many people, but that would be a bad example for my kids. I'm a big believer of being a living example of how I want my kids to contribute to society and care for themselves and others. So I made sure I had proper life insurance in case my time was really up and just tried my best. And I'm glad I've been able to stay safe, but like most healthcare workers, I've probably lost a decade of longevity witnessing the trauma that is forever itched in our memories. So I have to work extra hard to not burden my kids in my old age. And that's why I'm adamant to build my immunity and resilience. The notion that there is nothing you can do to improve your immunity is frankly misguided. There is plenty to do. You have to be just very strategic about it and purposely make time to care for yourself like you do watching your favorite TV show or caring for your kids. But this can't be done once a week. Your health needs to be addressed daily and is more important than your stock portfolio. So number one, the first thing that you can do right now is to get something to drink, like water to stay hydrated. Hydration is a daily effort. You can't expect to take a day off of hydration and feel good. Frankly, that's the first thing you should reach for whenever you just don't feel right. Your cells float in water like jellyfish float in the ocean. And when you get dehydrated, you're gonna dry up. Have you seen a jellyfish out of water? You're not going to feel good dehydrated and you will be more susceptible to getting infectious diseases from pneumonia to urinary tract infections and sepsis. That's why it's important to eat your foods wet. But in this processed food world, you are surrounded by dry goods such as cakes, granola bars, cereals, breads, etc. These foods not only are deficient in water, they dehydrate you by eating it. And they're also deficient in critical nutrients such as potassium. 99% of Americans are already potassium deficient. And if you're not eating beans and leafy greens, like three cups a day of each, you are likely deficient. If you haven't heard, the key to longevity is in healthy mitochondria, which are more than just the batteries that power your cells. I have treated patients with mitochondria dysfunction they don't have a good quality of life and are often frequent flyers in the hospital getting multiple infectious diseases. Have you been to a business where the entire staff knows you by name? That's how sick people get. Your health and longevity depends on the health of your mitochondria, which depend upon a healthy amount of potassium to bring in other critical minerals like magnesium, which 75% of Americans are missing in their diets. Magnesium drives over 300 biochemical reactions in your body, including the ability to make energy molecules called ATP. You will be tired, have cramps, get weak, not just in your skeletal muscles, but all over your body. Literally, your ability to breathe, digest, pump blood, pee and poop are dependent upon your healthy muscles. Your immune system's ability to seek out germs and to take them out is dependent upon magnesium. Now your immune system, they travel throughout your whole body in your blood vessels, which are brilliant red because of your red blood cells that carry the spark plugs necessary to ignite your mitochondria oxygen. But if you don't have enough oxygen, your blood won't be a brilliant red. And that means you are anemic, which commonly happens to people who have an inadequate amount of vitamin B12. Now, if you're vitamin B12 deficient, your bone marrow will be sick and produce giant unhealthy red blood cells. B12 is only made by microorganisms. So when you eat a clean vegetarian diet, you will need a supplement as plants don't have B12 and can't store B12 for you. If you eat animal products, but have absorption issues, you may still be B12 deficient efficient, especially those people who drink alcohol or have less gastric acids due to medicines, surgeries, or just simply being over 50. You're going to have absorption issues and you'll probably need to supplement as well. And you don't want to wait until you're anemic to fix B12 problems. Besides tiredness, you may have nerve damage, skin, and vision problems. Now, healthy red blood cells are critical to healthy mitochondria 
Besides B12, you need an adequate amount of folate. This is so important that it's standard practice to ask all women of childbearing age to take a prenatal supplement. And when you don't have enough folate, you don't just affect red blood cells, you damage your DNA. And by replacing folate, you can repair the DNA damage. Plants are abundant in folate. And it's also a common nutrient found in multivitamins. But make sure your vitamin says folate and not folic acid. Folic acid is synthetic and associated with an elevated risk of cancer when taken in excess. Now, most people associate low iron cells with low red blood cells. If you're iron deficient, you're bleeding somewhere and that needs a proper workup to find that bleeder to stop it. The body is not designed to eliminate iron unless you're bleeding. And if you're anemic due to iron deficiency, you need a workup for why you're bleeding. For women, it may be associated with heavy menses, but anyone can lose blood in their urine and stool so a colonoscopy and a urinary workup may be very necessary. Now, just because you are anemic doesn't necessarily mean you are iron deficient. And if you aren't iron deficient, excess iron is toxic, especially to the liver. And there is evidence it may be involved in dementia. Having adequate transporters of oxygen, red blood cells are essential to immunity and longevity. And your blood is super unique because it's your body's lifeline and sewer system at the same time. It's like fish tank water that has both oxygen and food and pee and poop from the fish. It's the job of your kidneys to filter your blood so that toxins you eat and the toxins your body makes remain at a low level so that your mitochondria functions at an optimal level. Kidney stones, inflammation, and infections happen when your kidneys are struggling to do their job. And when your kidneys poop out, you better believe your mitochondria will take a big hit. You can help your kidneys by increasing the pH of your urine by eating alkaline foods, which you can do by simply eating more vegetables. You can't alkalinize your urine by drinking alkaline water. You are better off using that extra money you will save by skipping that pH water and spending it on fresh, whole leafy greens. Your mitochondria is dependent upon a detox system called the glutathione redox system that is heavily reliant upon an amino acid called cysteine found in foods. Cysteine, even though it's not considered an essential amino acid because your body can make some of it, science is just beginning to appreciate that having a little is not the same as having enough. The dysregulation of cysteine may play a vital part in neurogenitive diseases such as various forms of dementia. Cysteine has the potential to be a double anti antioxidant as it supports the glutathione detoxification system and it's also an antioxidant by itself. The supplement N-acetylcysteine has been shown in small human trials to improve energy and muscle mass which both decline with age. As an added bonus, cysteine is actually a critical ingredient in your hair and your nails. So people who take N-acetylcysteine will notice that their nails are stronger and may have new hair growth. And this is why I make it a point to eat chickpeas, oats, and walnuts daily, which are all great sources of antioxidants, including the amino acid cysteine. Now, my last pick is actually an ancient drink called green tea, which has a variety of antimicrobial and immune boosting properties that is considered one of the healthiest drinks you can eat. It has been associated with a reduction in a variety of risks to cancers, and it metabolically can improve blood sugar, cholesterol, as well as blood pressure, reduce your risk of diabetes, allergy symptoms, as well as poor outcomes when you get pneumonia. It's actually officially recognized by the CDC as a treatment for a virus that caused genital warts. Now, if you want more information about moon boosting foods, check out my next video.